Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Z87X OC. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is of course a Z87 based motherboard, so it's got the Z87 chipset. That means it's designed for Intel's new fourth generation core processors, aka Haswell. That means it's also going to have the LGA1150 socket, so bear in mind this is not backwards compatible with Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge. You need one of the new fourth gen processors. This is also a specifically Gigabyte OC motherboard. That means it's designed for overclocking and there's lots of features that they've implemented uh, on the board to help out with overclocking. Uh, specifically, well, this is one of the items. If you're doing an outside of the box build, uh, you, or if you're doing an actual test station, uh, you might need some extra support for your graphics cards. So they've actually included an OC brace on there, a metal bracket that will help keep your graphics card set up. Speaking of graphics cards, you get four-way Crossfire X and two-way SLI graphics card uh, support on here if you're gonna go with a multi-card configuration. You also have uh, the OC Ignition patent pending button that you can use to assist with your overclocking needs. Uh, you also have 15 micron gold plated CPU memory and PCI Express uh, power, uh, power sockets. So they've added additional gold in there and that's to help uh, the electrical connection between uh, your CPU or your memory or your graphics cards. Also using, using all uh, IR, International Rectifier Power Delivery Componentry uh, for your digital PWMs uh, and your ICs. Uh, this is also a double copper PCB motherboard uh, which Gigabyte is often well known for. And uh, if we can get in close on the OC touch right there, you guys will notice there's a series of buttons physically mounted on the motherboard itself. Uh, you have OC turbo, gear, B-clock, steppings, uh, power button, of course, PCI Express switches, so you can individually turn off your PCI Express lanes. So if you're going with uh, different video card configurations and you're testing them, you can turn the lanes on and off. Uh, you also have on onboard voltage measurement points. I'm going to show you guys these when we get under the board itself. Uh, but then finally, in the lower left corner down here, uh, we have the specific specifications for this motherboard. If you guys want to pause and take a closer look, you can. I'm going to go ahead and take a look inside the box. First off, we have the motherboard itself, which is in there. I'll finish on that with a close-up look. We have a ton of accessories here, so let me pull those out. Of course, we also have some guides. So this is your uh, motherboard user's manual. This is going to have lots of important information on it, such as... If I can find the right page. Ooh, a block diagram. I like that Gigabyte gives you block diagrams. Also a list of all the components on the board, and then a walkthrough of the installation procedures if you need that. You also have a multilingual installation guidebook if English is not your first language. Here are some serial ATA cables. You get a total of four. Uh, they're all black. They're all going to be SATA Rev, Rev 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so up to six gigabits per second for your SSDs. Uh, two of them are going to have straight plugs on both ends. Two of them have a straight plug on one end and an angled plug on the other end. They're also providing you with both an SLI and a Crossfire X bridge. Uh, I like these because they're black and they're going to blend in nicely. They're the flexible kind, so depending on the uh, spacing that you have on your video cards, you should be able to match those up. Crossfire X bridge included as well. We also have your motherboard uh, users. Well, this is going to have a, your user's manual in a PDF form. It's also going to have all of your drivers. Uh, it's best to head over to the Gigabyte website to download the latest drivers rather than using the ones off the disk but I find that's often useful, especially if you want to get your network card driver installed so you can actually connect to the internet to download the rest of the drivers. Uh, here's that OC brace. So this is an actual metal bracket uh, which physically attaches to the board by way of some screws and a back brace that they've included. That's going to provide support for your graphics card. So if you're doing an outside of the bo box build again, or if you're setting this up uh, on a test bed that doesn't have a brace, you can use that to help keep your graphics card supported and separated and keep them from, from bending from side to side and putting stress on your PCI Express sockets. Uh, you also have, if I can turn it uh, right side up, uh, you have an actual IO shield here for the back of your case. Uh, it's one of the ones that has squishy electromagnetic, electromagnetic shielding on the back. Then finally you have uh, some leads here, so these are actual uh, leads for all of the voltage read points on the board, so little plugs on one end and then the other end which you can connect to your multimeter. And now for a close-up look at the Z87X OC motherboard. As you can tell, this is going with uh, Gigabyte's favored color scheme for their OC motherboards. That is orange and black. Uh, so we have a lot of black components on the board. The motherboard PCB itself is also a very nice flat black color. So there's a look at the back for a closer look at the PCB. Uh, all of your uh, heat sinks and components on the board are held on with uh, spring-loaded Phillips head screws. So you can remove those without too much difficulty. 
Also wanted to point, it out, point out the fan outs or fan headers on the board because you do get eight total, tons of fan connectivity on the board. Uh, a couple are three pin fan headers. I'll point those out first. System fan header up there in the top and then another system fan header on the right side right there. Those are both three pin. The rest are all four pin PWM fan uh, headers. So you got CPU uh, A and B right there, or I should say CPU fan, which is the white one and then the CPU optional fan to the right of that. Uh, another four pin fan header right here. And then uh, that, that's what, one, two, three, four pin fan headers, and then uh, four, five, and six here down along the bottom edge of the board. So that gives you a total of eight fan headers. Uh, again, six of them are four pin, and two of them are three pin. Next up, I'm going to take a really close up look at the board. I'll kind of be going over all the componentry. We're going to start down here in the lower right uh, with the front panel header. So that's the color coded one that you can see right there, so you can more easily tell which are which. Uh, you also have, well, you got a couple USB uh, connectors right there. I'll come back to those. Uh, but to the left of the front panel header, you have a system fan header right there. You also have a USB out right there. So that's 20 pin front panel USB 3.0 connector. Uh, you actually have two of those on the board. The other one is further up, and I'll get to that one as well. There's the other system fan header next to that. Uh, you also have three, uh, or actually, I should say two. Am I counting? Yes, two, I'm sorry. Two USB 2.0 headers right there. So there's one and two. Each of those will support two USB 2.0 ports. Uh, you also have a COM header right there. Uh, another four pin fan header that I already pointed out right there. Uh, you got SPDIF in and out right there via the uh, pinouts. And you also have your front panel audio connector. Uh, next up, let's talk about PCI Express because this board is capable of multi-card configuration. So here's all your PCI Express slots. Um, the orange and the black. A couple legacy PCI slots right there, two black ones, and then a PCI Express X1. Uh, and then you also have all the orange ones. These are going to be for your video cards. The top three are PCI Express Gen 3. Those will be running off of the CPU that you have installed. You also have a fourth one here that's uh, PCI Express Gen 2. That one's routed through the chipset. So uh, let's go over video card configurations that you might be interested in. First off, for two-way SLI, uh, you have these two uh, PCI Express connectors. Uh, all these, of course, are full-length 16x. The top one here is the only one that's going to run at 16x all the time. And uh, your CPU from Haswell, your, your Intel Haswell CPU is going to have 16 PCI Express Gen 3 lanes. So run at 16x if you're just using the top one. If you're going to go, go with two-way SLI or two-way crossfire, uh, you'll be running at uh, X8 and X8, and that would be on the top slot here and the, the middle one right here. Uh, if you're going to go with three-way or four-way Crossfire X, uh, and that's only for Crossfire X, uh, you can go with these top three for three-way. That will run at X8, X4, and X4. Uh, and then if you're going to go with four-way, uh, you get an extra PCI Express Gen 2 connectivity off the bottom there, but that still works for Crossfire X, so that will run at uh, X8, X4, X4, and X4. And that last one, of course, is connected to the chipset. So there's your uh, different configurations for PCI Express. Also wanted to point out you have a PEG or PCI Express graphics power connector right there. If you are running multiple card configurations, uh, you might want to try plugging that one in to make sure you have plenty of juice running to the graphics cards, particularly if you're going to be overclocking them. But I'd say for one or two way configurations, you should be able to go without that. Uh, you also, of course, have your Z87 chipset that is under your Gigabyte black and orange heatsink right there. That's controlling a, a variety of things on the motherboard, but uh, I, I did want to point out the excellent improvement from Z87, which would be your black serial ATA connectors right there. You get a full complement of six serial ATA revision three, six gigabits per second ports. They're all going to be RAID compatible, so you can do RAID 0, 1, 5, or 10 off of those. So if you have lots of SSDs, or you just need lots of high-speed storage connectivity, you got all six of those right there. Also, a couple surface-mounted USB uh, 2.0 connectors right there. Now, those can be used for a variety of things, but for example, if you have uh, a high-end uh, graphics editing suite or something like that installed, some sometimes those will need an internal dongle. You can plug those in and keep those a bit more protected um, rather than having them outside your case. Let's continue up the side of the board uh, over here on the right. So uh, first off, you might, or I, say, I should say you also have uh, that red USB 3.0 connector right there. Uh, that's also for front panel, uh, the 20 pin. 
and um, that's going to give you a couple more USB 3.0 uh, that's running native, natively off of the chipset. There's the aforementioned system fan header. Uh, here is your 24-pin main motherboard power connector, and this is another uh, example where Gigabyte has sort of shored up the componentry and the build quality. They're using actual more heavy-duty uh, pin connectors in there. Uh, they've also gold-plated gold it, and that is because depending on your overclocking configuration, you, you can sometimes be drawing so much power that you can actually warp the connectors uh, if they're not reinforced. You also have a uh, LED right there, so that's going to uh, give you some debug codes you can use while you're booting up your system to uh, help do troubleshooting if you're having any difficulties. And then uh, you have your overclockers area, which is right above here. So there's actually a ton of stuff going on right here. First off, you have the tag button right there. You can uh, load a profile. Uh, the tag button will keep that profile saved even if you clear your CMOS. You also have the turbo button here that's going to load a gigabyte optimized uh, overclocking setting. Uh, your gear button here is going to change your ratios for these uh, upper buttons right here. So uh, you can go in 0.1 megahertz increments or you can go in 1 megahertz increments and that gear button will switch between those. Uh, for your increments that you're switching, the plus and minus right here is going to be changing your B clock settings. And then above that, you have another plus and minus button that is going to change your actual CPU multiplier settings. Of course, you also have a uh, surface mounted power button right up there at the top. Uh, you have a set of four dips, which is also right up here at the top, the white ones. Uh, those are actually going to allow you to turn your PCI Express lanes on or off. So uh, it's useful if you're doing a multi card configuration and you want to drop back down to one or two cards. Uh, to do some extra um, benchmarking. It's also very useful if you actually set up a water cooling loop on this. Uh, if you're having any difficulties um, with testing or if you actually need to go back again and uh, test with one or two cards, you can actually turn those lanes off rather than having to uninstall the cards themselves. You have some buttons next to those. Uh, the white one at the very top is a reset button. Uh, you also have a memory safe button next to that, uh, a direct to BIOS button, and then you also have uh, the uh, settings lock button, and that's another set uh, option that they're giving you to uh, sort of bypa or bypass or get around uh, BIOS clear. So uh, you can use that to lock in some overclocking settings, uh, even if you clear the BIOS. You also have your, uh, your BIOS option switches right down there. Uh, so those are going to let you uh, enable or disable dual BIOS or switching back and forth between them. Also, next to that, you have all of your voltage connection points, and you can use those with the included leads uh, to connect your multi multimeter up and get your real-time detailed voltage, uh, voltage read points. Voltage readings, that's the word I'm looking for. Okay, next to that, you have your memory. So uh, these, these uh, tall slots right here, red and black, of course, they're dual channel, so make sure you install at least two sticks of memory at a time. DDR3 compatible, of course, and uh, you can, of course, support up to 1866, I'm sorry, up to 1600 speed memory uh, officially from Intel with your Haswell processor. You can also, of course, go for overclock settings beyond that. To the left of that, you have your CPU socket. Again, that's 1150. That's made for Intel's fourth generation core processor. So again, not backwards compatible. Don't try to drop into Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge. Uh, above that and to the left, you have your CPU power connectivity. Uh, so they've actually provided you with an 8-pin plus a 4-pin. So again, if you're going for um, extreme overclocking, uh, you want to plug in both of those. If not, you can usually get by with just the 8-pin. You also have power delivery components on the board. Again, uh, your IR. Uh, rect international rectifier power del delivery components as well as all solid black caps located right there. Uh, some big old chokes right there for your eight phase power delivery so it's going to make sure if you're going for overclocking that you have all of the power that you might need. Let's finish off uh, with your IO here on the side of the board and uh, first off of course you have a couple more USB 2.0 ports right there. Uh, right here you have this button which I mentioned Briefly, when I was going through the, the intro, but I wanted to give a bit uh, clearer definition of what it does. This is the OC ignition button. This is basically going to keep the power on for your board and the components you have connected, even if you shut down the system. Uh, it's another item that's extremely useful, useful for overclocking. If you're not overclocking, maybe more limited usefulness on that. But uh, for instance, if you're doing LN2 and uh, you shut down your system, your fans are going to spin down. By keeping that button on, your fans are going to keep spinning. That can help reduce condensation. Uh, also, if you have specific settings that are in, say, volatile memory uh, that uh, you have installed, actually shutting off the system and, uh, and killing the power from that can sometimes lose your settings. So that's just going to help keep those in place and up and running. OK, let's talk about the video outs that we have here, because we have several of them. Uh, the uh, iGPU in your Intel fourth generation core processor is going to be outputting via this. Uh, you have a uh, HDMI 1.4 out. You have a DisplayPort, 
another HDMI out, and then you also have an optical TOSLink connector right there for your audio. You'll notice two, four, and six USB 3.0 ports right there. Uh, those are actually all coming natively off of the chipset. Uh, they're uh, giving you additional USB ports by way of a Renesas integrated hub. You also have uh, Intel NIC right there, combo PS2 port right there for a mouse or a keyboard, and finally your audio, uh, your analog audio connectors for your microphone in and your audio out. And before we close, here's a quick look at that OC brace uh, all installed. Again, fits right on the motherboard and gives you some extra support for your PCI Express graphics card. Also lets you set the board up like that vertically. Very handy. Uh, they've also given you a set of 10 uh, little thumb screws, and I really like thumb screws, so I just wanted to point that out as well. Of course, those you can use to install your video cards onto the brace. Uh, but that's, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the new Gigabyte Z87X OC motherboard featuring the uh, Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's new fourth generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, you should like and you should subscribe to our Newegg TV YouTube channel. We'll see you all in the next video.